Hello boys and girls, my name is Hotsosi and welcome back to another day in Minecraft once again in the redstone test world. Behind me there we have the setup uh, to figure out if uh, hoppers are full or empty and for demonstration purpose we shall remove the ones in between because then we can also um, have this one going there and get a signal out from the top. That's a setup we contrived uh, some time ago and now we will work on the next step because on here that's basically where our items go into bulk storage so i want to get a signal out from the top if this hopper is getting filled then we probably want to add a few items into shulker boxes to make space in the storage and then here at the bottom, if uh, these hoppers are empty, uh, we want to request additional items from the farm. So the problem we have here, we have in one slice, we have two signals that we have to deal with. And the one from the top, has to go down because down here somewhere we will have the shulk box loader this design here and uh, this signal uh, actually will probably go uh, out somewhere um, have not yet figured that out so I think what we need to have here is uh, something with an observer uh, and a sticky piston. Um, And let's have it like that. Sticky piston pointing down. And then here we will have the same. Uh, however, sticky pistons pushing out. So, so we can have something like this then something like that and now the question is as with uh, these things always push limit okay that works then this should also work. Oh, yeah. And because that was short pulse, uh, let's bring it back. And with this setup, we should be able to have this one going. So question is, if we have this and then we will get another signal there does that work yes we can also bring it back up ah that does not work because this block sticks to that one um that's a bit of a, of a problem there so let me have a think about it because 
And actually, the the set up with the uh, with the with the slime and the honey is is really nice, uh, but of course it comes with drawbacks that blocks on the side do tend to stick to it. Now here is a concept that actually does work. Uh, if we uh, switch out the slime blocks with normal blocks and then just push the blocks up and over, uh, then this does actually do the trick. So if, for example, I remove this stack, we can see that one is pushed down and the only drawback is that I have to move that uh, up again and this is not that ideal because um, we do not actually know when we need to move this up because we should uh, reset the system uh, once this hopper is no longer filled. So you could imagine that um, when we uh, when we put in uh, this here, uh, so that stuff is put into uh, the uh, shulker box. Uh, we could count the, the time it takes to load a shulker box and then move it back up. But in the meantime, we might even get more items in here. So what we actually would then need to do is fill in a second shulker box. And uh, without that... Uh, uh, security mechanism in place, we might end up overflowing here on the top and not realizing that we have something to do down there. I mean, what we probably could do is uh, have this going like this. Uh, basically powering the piston while we have things in here and that way we will not be able to push the push the the, the blocks up only when we retract the piston again because we don't have things in there we can actually push the piston up. Uh, that would still require a mechanism to, uh, to trigger this because basically constantly powering this piston while the upper piston is powered, that will not work because while it's extended, it cannot push. Uh, but if the upper piston is retracted, uh, we do not notice that down there we need a block update on this piston uh, for it to be able to do that. So probably we we'll still have to uh, have a timer of some sort in order to, uh, to force the, the reset there and the question is can we have a tileable time one white tileable timer um, that can count the time it takes to load a shulker box because the 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 usual hopper clock the ether hopper clock can be designed in a way so it's one white tileable, but um, if you think, uh, I mean, each item that switches over 
uh, is basically one item that is put into the shulker so we can only count up to uh, 10 items being filled into the shulker box uh, or 10 items 10 stacks of item and not 27 so that's a bit of of an issue but I think we could work around this by uh, uh, just triggering this piston occasionally um, and see if it's working and if not we continue filling shulker boxes so I will have to see if that there is no better solution for that problem and uh, if there is none then of course I have to hook up this system with that system because um, what we then probably want to do is have something like um, this and that so basically that would be the state um, uh, where we are not filling anything into a shulker box however if we uh, if we are actually getting a signal from there we would switch that torch off and items could flow from above into the shulker box but let me see uh, what's the best way to uh, trigger the reset here first I put something together here. We have a modified ESO hopper clock, uh, something shown by uh, Exuma White a while back. And if we put in here the right number of item, um, that would mean that we have uh, several clock ticks, but an even number of uh, clock ticks uh compared to how long it takes to fill a shulker box and with this setup with a cauldron filled with water down here and then a comparator we then can actually take out uh, a signal uh, when we are in this state and as soon as we uh, remove the things up here this piston retracts and when we get um, a change of signal there uh, the piston moves the cauldron up and we no longer have a signal there however here we do have a different story uh, because here we actually want to send a signal out towards uh, our wider world requesting a shulker box which can take a while to get back and what is more um, we detect actually empty hopper here so basically this state uh, should bring the the piss the the, the blocks over and uh, maybe having an observer here that's not the, the best the best uh, setup or we would have to ensure that uh, these pistons back here are extended so they cannot be extended um, but anyway here we basically would uh, push back the blocks immediately um, because uh, the, 
the time it takes for the shulker box to get back, um, that's a variable amount of time and cannot be, te be detected by this system. So we would just assume we request the shulker box, it eventually will come and we are good here. And then we might have a manual a mechanism to override uh, because, for example, we might take even more items out of the chest so that one shulker box full of items does not uh, replenish the things we have taken out. So we can basically send manually a, a second request. But basically the idea is if this hopper is empty, we send a signal out requesting one shulker box. And anything more we would need, um, uh, we would then have to manually request it. I think this system here needs a bit of, uh, of reworking so that we actually invert the signal or trigger the piston when we have no signal here um, and don't do anything if we have power there. Um, but I think now it's the time to uh, uh, put all this together. Um, also figure that out because that might mean we need to space things a bit more apart. And with that, uh, then I think we can call this episode done. So let's put two modules side by side, combine everything we have learned so far. And um, yeah, then we will see. Here we have it, everything put together. This middle piece we have already seen back there. It is a bit elongated so that we can properly uh, handle um, this setup here. And then here in the back, the same clock will also trigger the horizontal pushing back of the pistons. All that we need then to care of, we get two signals out of here. Uh, one when we move the block over, one we move it when we move it back. And we only have to ensure that we consider the first signal um, to be relevant. I mean, we also would get uh, a signal each time this this piston fires. So that's also something to consider then. Then down here we have the shulk loader and I think here we will have a hopper line supplying um, uh, everything with empty shulker boxes. Uh, the full shulker boxes are taken out here and then here in this dropper elevator deposited in these barrels here, which are basically on floor level in front of our chest. But that's it. That was it for another Redstone Heavy episode. I hope you enjoyed it uh, and we will do more redstone in the future so hope to see you then for now it's goodbye